Hi everyone, we've got a handful of headlines for today's Pelicanus news. I've categorized them into endangered species, pollution, tribes, and people. These stories are truly incredible and also reminders to me that conservation can actually work. All right, I actually found a ton of headlines this uh, this time. Um, I had to reduce it probably in half, but I still had a bunch. So I'm gonna just kind of go through it fairly quickly. Um, all right, first category of endangered species. Rare endangered whooping crane hatches at Virginia Conservation Institute. For the first time, a whooping crane, one of the most endangered species of crane in the world, hatched at the Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute in Front Royal, Virginia, and is thriving. The Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute, SCBI, uh, their bird team took the egg under their wing after the International Crane Foundation and Neseda National Wildlife Refuge staff in Wisconsin found the egg abandoned in a wild nest. A 16-year-old female named Taya and a 25-year-old male named Goliath were selected to serve as surrogate parents. The bird team is encouraged by the colt's growth and report that the adults are protective and attentive to its needs. Habitat destruction, hunting, poaching, climate change, natural disasters, and oil spills have all contributed to the decline of the whooping cranes. It's just a few threats. Uh, in 1941, approximately only 22 whooping cranes remain in the wild. Today, approximately 700 whooping cranes live in the wild and 140 live in human care. Next one, biologicaldiversity.org. A virgin islands flower finally gets endangered species protections after 47 years. If you get a chance, look this up. It's a really cool looking flower. Um, and this is just really great news. The US Fish and Wildlife Service today protected the Marron Bacora as endangered under the Endangered Species Act and designated 2,548 acres as critical habitat. This plant is a 10 foot tall flowering shrub that has been reduced to just seven fragmented populations on St. John, U.S. Virgin Islands, and one population on Tortola, British Virgin Islands. Known by its Latin name Solanum conocarpum, it was believed to be extinct but was rediscovered in 1992. The Smithsonian Institute first identified it as needing protection in 1975 and the service placed it on a candidate list for protection in 1980 where it sat until the government of Virgin, Virgin Islands petitioned for its protection in 1996. And after almost two decades of litigation from the Center of Biological Diversity, the service finally proposed protection last year and finalized it on the 15th of June. The next story is um, from SEJ.org, but it's originally from New York Times. Um, the Biden administration tosses previous administration's definition of quote-unquote habitat for endangered species. This is huge. The previous administration's definition was at odds with the conservation purposes of the Endangered Species Act, wildlife officials said. The Biden administration is throwing out the definition of habitat for endangered animals, returning to an understanding that existed before the government uh, under the previous administration shrank the areas that could be protected for animals under threat of extinction. By striking a single sentence from the regulations, the United States Fish and Wildlife Service and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Fisheries could once again protect a critical habitat, quote unquote even if it had become unsuitable because of development or other changes, but could be restored. The, <laughs> you gotta love this. The previous administration narrowed the definition of habitat, limiting federal protection to only places that can sustain an endangered species, as opposed to a more broad historic habitat where the animal could someday live or dwell. In pollution, this first one is coming out of time.com. This, I can't, this story is wild. China's clean air campaign is bringing down total global pollution. China has reduced air pollution nearly as much in seven years as the US did in three decades. 
helping to also bring down the average global smog levels in the process. <laughs> the amount of harmful particulates in the air in China fell 40% from 2013 to 2020, according to the University of Chicago's Energy Policy Institute, which would add uh, about two, oh, and, and this adds about two years to average life expectancy if sustained. While smog in large swaths of the country still significantly exceeds safe levels, its experience shows how quickly progress can be made, researchers, including Professor Michael Greenstone, said in their report. I also didn't know this either. About 97% of the world's population live in areas where air quality is usually worse than what the World Health Organization recommends. That's so crazy to me. China's success in reducing pollution is a strong indication of the opportunities that could lie ahead for other nations if they were to imp impose strong pollution policies. Moving on to tribes. I've got two stories here. Uh, this one, first one's coming out of nps.gov. Yellowstone National Park announced that Mount Doan, I think that's how you pronounce it, is now named the First People's Mountain. Yellowstone National Park announced today that Mount Doan is now named First People's Mountain. The announcement allow, follows a 15 to 0 vote affirming the change by the U.S. Board on Geographic Names, the federal body responsible for maintaining uniform geographic name usage throughout the federal government. First People's Mountain is a 10,551 foot peak within Yellowstone National Park east of Yellowstone Lake in the southeastern portion of the park. The, pre the peak was previously named after Gustavus Doan, a key member of the Washburn Langford Doan Expedition in 1870, prior to Yellowstone becoming America's first national park. The story then goes on to say how terrible of a human he was. Um, yeah, so feel free to look into that, but this is an incredible move and love to see it. Uh, which also goes really well into the next story coming out of WashingtonPost.com. Native American tribes to co-manage national monument for the first time. I love this. The unprecedented agreement gives five tribes more input in the management of Bears Ears National Monument in Utah, the monument that was under so much scrutiny uh, during the previous presidential um, administration. And the Biden administration has reached a historic agreement to give five Native American tribes more say over day-to-day -day management of a national monument in Utah, marking a new chapter in the federal government's often fraught relationship with tribes. The Interior Department's Bureau of Land Management and the U.S. Forest Service signed the cooperative agreement with five tribes that have inhabited the region surrounding Bears Ears National Monument for centuries. The Hopi tribe, the Navajo Nation, the Ute Mountain Ute tribe, the Ute Indian tribe of the Unte and the Ore Reservation and the Pueblo of the Zuni. And last story in our last category of people. This is coming out of globenewswire.com. This is a story about Dr. Jean-Paul Rodriguez, uh, somebody that we interviewed for our Possibilist series. Dr. Jean-Paul Rodriguez, chair of the IUCN Species Survival Commission, is the recipient of the inaugural Wolfgang Kiesling International Prize for Species Conservation. American Humane, the country's first national humane organization and the world's largest certifier of animal welfare practices, announced that Dr. Jean-Paul Rodriguez, chair of the IUCN Species Survival Commission, is the recipient of the inaugural Wolfgang Kiesling International Prize for Species Conservation. The Kiesling Prize, created in honor of Wolfgang F. Kiesling, the founder of Laurel Parque and globally acknowledged leader in the conservation space, recognizes those who achieve significant positive change in the field of conservation practice, theory, and research. Congratulations to Dr. Jean-Paul Rodriguez. I really hope these stories bring some optimism and lightness to your month. Um, I know I learned a lot and am really excited about them. So I look forward to sharing more in the future. Thank you. Thank you.